Jason. Today is Thursday, June 2nd, and I thank you for joining into our weekly PPACA webinars. If you're new to the format, uh, these webinars are designed to give you the latest information, also to be treated as a, a resource to ask questions um, and hopefully learn some new things, all of us, um, because we are certainly in this together. And uh, as I said many times, we'll sink or swim together. And uh, you know, the more questions that you ask, the more we all learn. So hopefully you find these uh, webinars helpful. And uh, as you can see from the agenda today and the small type, I have a lot of <laughs> updates for you. Uh, so we'll jump right in. Um, again, if you want to ask questions, you can either do so by raising your little hand icon or you can just type a question into the question box and we'll answer that at the end of the webinar. So just uh, as a test, if you can just put your hand up if you see my screen, awesome, thank you. All right, great, I'm gonna put all your hands down now. Um, so let's just jump right into it. The first bullet point way up at the top here, high mark, blue shield, uh, I did mention last week that they will be reviewing all off-exchange submissions for the under-65 market during the special enrollment period. Um, they are going to, they want all of the information submitted, proof of the uh, qualifying event, et cetera, submitted with the application. If they don't get it, they're going to pend it for about 10 days and reach out uh, to either us or um, to the insured directly and obtain that information. If they don't get it, the case will be closed. So guaranteed issue does not mean guaranteed issue, and um, this, this started occurring as of the 31st. So it's a new change just for this week, but if you are submitting, be mindful of that. Uh, the next bullet point, Geisinger Commission changes and a mental health vendor change. Uh, their fiscal year runs July through June 30th, so July their new fiscal year. They are changing broker commissions. Um, it's not a terrible change uh, where you see, um, you know, the 15 is pretty much consistent in the 2 to 50 market. So if you wrote less than 300 lives and you have less than 300 subscribers on the book, um, if you sell in the 2 to 50 market, you're going to get $15 per employee per month. If you sell in the 51 to 99, you'll get 18. So that's actually a bump for the larger group. So it could be much worse or could have been much worse. Um, for any effective groups, they will change as of July 1st, the compensation. If any of you are earning any of the Geisinger bonuses, they will continue on for the 12 months uh, of the bonus period. So I hope that makes sense. If you have additional questions, uh, let me know. I'm happy to uh, get answers for you. So the next bullet point, um, this will be um, the rate filings we talked a little bit about last week. I did get the link off of the website, and that link is in this week's uh, healthcare reform newsletter that went out this morning. So if you don't have it yet in your inbox, you're going to be getting that. Also, um, in next week's webinar, because I didn't get it in time to get it into this one, I'm sorry, next week's newsletter, um, there is going to be a blast from Highmark for both Central and Western, uh, basically talking about, well, giving you the Highmark talking points on the rate filings. I haven't looked at it yet. Um, you know, I'm sure. You might be able to use some of their talking points that they release. Nevertheless, that's in next week's newsletter. And also, UPMC Mercy Hospital, it will be out of network as of June 30th. The contract's up, so as of 7-1, it's going to be out of network. For those uh, Western PA folks that are affected by that, um, just be mindful of that. Again, I didn't get the blasts in time to get them in today's newsletter, but if you want those blasts, just shoot me an email and I'll get them to you um, just via email um, before next week, obviously. Um, so on to the next bullet point, dental policies on the SFM. So this, this is an odd one, um, trying to find my notes. So basically, any, any policies, any, anybody that went through the SFM and did not have a, an advanced premium tax credit, 
there were issues with effectuating dental policies. And I'm not sure why, you know, I'm sure there are systems errors and glitches all over the place. Um, but what they're doing is the FFM is going to be sending the carriers information on the dental policies and automatically effectuating these policies. And then the carriers have to go back to them and say, no, they are active, or no, they were terminated, no, there was no premium submitted. So this is going to happen what they say in, it, well, what the CMS uh, says is in September. Now that's a little ways off, but I just wanted to let you know about it ahead of time because this screams to me that it's going to be just a mess with people saying, hey, I didn't want this dental, now I'm being charged. So I'm sure you can, you can imagine that when the government tries to fix something, we are affected most. <laughs> so just, uh, again, be mindful of that. I do have that blast if you are interested in reading that. Capital Blue Cross Commission errors, again. So two months ago, um, Capital paid probably about 15 to 20 of our broker partners um, commissions to other general agencies. They did a special run and they fixed it or was, they were supposed to fix it. Um, and then as of this month, it was unfixed. So we brought it to their attention. They're going to fix it. They're going to do another special run for us. And um, you know we'll, we'll be getting the corrections out as soon as we can. Uh, the correction should be, the, the special run should be in um, the end of next week or the beginning of the following. But, you know, if you're affected, just please know that we're working to fix this. This is not our error, and we just have to deal with it, unfortunately. So, um, you know, if, if you're one of the affected agents, just know that we're working to make sure that you're going to get your money and everything is as it should be, as frustrating as it is to all of us. So I also um, came across an interesting article about wellness programs and how um, they are taxable or could be taxable to the employees. And I thought that it was important uh, to bring this to your attention because wellness programs are certainly, you know, the buzz lately, um, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, a lot of employers are taking a notice to these wellness programs, but there was, um, that from the office of the chief counsel of the IRS, they, they concluded that an employer may not exclude from an employee's gross income payments of cash rewards for participating in a wellness program, and an employer may not exclude from an employee's gross income reimbursements of premiums for participating in a wellness program if the premiums for the wellness program were originally made by salary reduction through a Section 125. So, you know, just to cut to the, sh the chase, it looks like, you know, as, no, it has to be taxed somewhere. And the IRS won't stand for it not being taxed somewhere. So if anybody, any employer is getting some sort of, any employee is getting some sort of cash reward or uh, discounts, if you will, that equate to tax savings through a Section 125, they're gonna, those portions are going to have to be added back into the taxable income. Again, I have that memorandum. It's from mid-April of this year. Um, if you want that information, I'll send it to you gladly. I'm sure more information is going to be coming out about it. But uh, for those of you that are promoting wellness programs or uh, putting them in place, just be mindful of that. Capital Blue Cross, on to the next bullet point. Uh, they have created a producer hotline, and, and uh, this is for individual and Medicare. Um, along with it, they have a member authorization form that is needing to be completed to give you authorization. Of course, as working through, through URL and as one of our partners, you can always call us. It's probably a lot more convenient uh, with any issues. And uh, that blast is actually in this morning's uh, newsletter. So um, if you want more information on that, go ahead and, and open that up in the newsletter. and read until your heart's content. And if you have any questions, give us a call. An opportunity for uh, CE credits. Uh, the Central Pennsylvania Association of Health Underwriters is having a three CE course. They're holding it here at URL on July 26th. It's from 8 to 12. 
And if you're interested in attending, um, the blast is going to be going out. I can also forward the blast to you uh, from CPHU so you can sign up. The topics are the future of group insurance and a legislative update uh, by Vince Phillips. And then another hour is the changing worksite benefits market, and this is from Colonial. And then the last CE is the pharmacy benefit and industry update. Uh, so those, I think, are timely subjects, of course, and uh, we all need our CEs to maintain our license. So if you're interested, watch for the blast or just shoot me an email and I can send that out to you. It is $40 if you're a member of uh, the National Association of Health Underwriters, and it's $70 if you are not. Um, again, if you want information on how to join NAHU, let me know, or information on the CE course. Um, again, let me know and I'll get that to you. So that's pretty much it. That uh, is, brings us to our open forum. And while you're typing in your questions, um, just, just know that next Thursday is another webinar at 930. I also want to do a really quick poll um, before we get our questions. So I'm going to put down all of your hands and if you would, after I ask this question, raise your hands. Um, if you plan on, Tracy, you raised your hand already. <laughs> put, the, put all the hands down. And the question is, for 2017, for those of you that have been writing in the individual under 65 market, just with a show of hands, how many of you intend to be in that market for 2017? All right. Well, surprising, actually a, a good bit of you. Bill, it looks like you changed your mind. You said yes, and you're like, no way. <laughs> um, okay, so very interesting. I, I thank you for that. We're actually going to be getting out a more in-depth survey because we really do want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our agent partners and obviously knowing what your intentions are for the individual market for 17 is going to help us uh, plan course. All right, so let's get to the questions today, and I have no questions. Awesome. All right. Well, again, thank you for joining in weekly. I do appreciate it. I appreciate the partnership, and, uh, you know, we're starting to get ramped up here. You can almost feel it, and, uh, you know, we'll be getting all the information out to you as soon as we get it. So thank you, as always, for joining in. Hopefully you'll join in next week, and if you have any questions, certainly just follow up with us. Thanks again and have a great balance of the week and a great weekend. Bye-bye.